remember we were in the story of Nagdimon ben Gurion. So the story of Nagdimon ben Gurion, Boketov, Masechet Taani, Dafkaf Amudale, 20A1. If you remember what happened was that he needed water for the Ole Regalim, he went and he told them. Yeah, he went and he told a very rich person, please give me 12 of your wells of water. And if I don't pay you back the 12 wells filled with water, I'm going to have to pay you 12 kikar kesef, right? A lot of money. And the Adon was ecstatic. He was mamash bashamayim. He was very thrilled because he already realized he was going to make a lot of money. So he sent him in the morning, give me the wells full of water or more money. He said, ah, I still got a lot of time. He came in the afternoon, I still got a lot of time. He came in the I still have a lot of time. Finally, when it comes, the guy goes into a bathhouse and he's saying, ha, ah, it didn't rain the entire year. Now it's going to start raining. So he says, he went inside of the Beit HaMelchatz Simcha. He went with joy, with happiness. Yeah? So now it says over here like this. Yeah, you with me? When the Adon comes to the Beit HaMelchatz Simcha, Nagdimon Levnichas Beit HaMikdash Keshu Atsev. So Nagdimon Ben Gurion goes inside of the Bet Midrash when he's all upset. Nitatef, he puts on his clothing with Yama Bet and he says the Tefila. Nitatef remembers usually with the Talit or something that he comes and he's Nitatef. And he says, Master of the universe. Yeah? Galui viadu alefanecha. It is revealed in front of your eyes. Yeah? Shelo lichbodi asiti. I didn't do it for myself. Yeah, I didn't do it also for the kavod of my father's house. I did it for your kavod, for your honor. The water should be always found for the ole regalim. Immediately, all of a sudden, they started becoming clouds and it started raining and raining and raining until the 12 mayanot became full. Veotiru, yeah, and it was even left over. Now you have to pay me. You know why you have to pay me? Because you gave me a full well, and I gave you even extra. So you have to pay me now. Nagdimon Ben Gurion, no, Nagdimon Ben Gurion tells the goy that the goy has to pay me now. Why? Because I gave you even extra. I filled it up even above the level. Yeah. So Amalo, he says. I know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did everything for you. But I still have Pitron Peh on you. That I could still take away the money from you. Why? It was already Shikia. Sunset. And once it's sunset and it started raining, that's not yours anymore. That's already mine. So the Goy comes and he tells like the Imam al I still want you. Why? Because it rained in my property. It rained on my turf, not on yours. Right? So what happened? He goes back into the Bet HaMikdash. He puts on his talit again and he says, Show everybody. Illustrate to everybody that you have people which are beloved in this world. Immediately the clouds dispersed and the sun came out. Says the moment the Adon to to Nadimom and Gurion, So he says, if it wasn't the fact that the sun came out and it's actually shining forth through the clouds, I would have still said that I'm going to take away my money from you. But Tana, but they said, Lona Dimon Shemo, his name is not really Nagdimon. Elabuni Shemo, his name was Buni. So why was he called Nagdimon? Shenigdera Chama Bavuro, because the Shemesh, Baka'a et Ananim Bavuro. And they called him because of that Nagdimon, Nigdera, which means that the Shemesh, the sun came and it started breaking forth through the clouds to show Q was during the daytime. Remember, when it starts coming night, when it starts raining very hard, what happens? It looks in the middle of the day, but it looks at nighttime all of a sudden. So the guy comes and he says, listen, it was already the time of Mincha and I'm going to the bathhouse. Even if it's going to start raining, it's already too late. It's already been shot to Mincha. All of a sudden it comes, duh, rain, rain. <sighs> That's it. There's nothing there. But what happened? He realized that really with the fact that he brought back the sun, 
So now he can't say anything anymore. What's he going to say? It wasn't well, no, really, it was Shkia, but but Kilu who brought it back in order to show right that he wasn't going to lose. Yeah. Fine. People don't put your trust in. Don't put your trust in. The queen. But now we learned in the Brayta. There were three people that the sun was kadam bavuram, which means that Shkiat Chama stopped by a miracle. Meaning that technically speaking, it was already Shkiat. There was nothing what to do. But Akadosh Baruch did a miracle for three different people. Who are the three different people? Moshe Rabenu, yeah, Yoshua Binun. And Agdimon Ben Gurion. These are the three people. Yeah? Yeah. The Gemara, Bishlaman Agdimon Ben Gurion, Mi Gemara. I understand Agdimon Ben Gurion because of the Masoret we just said, our Gemara. Yoshua Nami also by Yoshua, it's the Pasuk. Mikra de Tichtiv, by Idoma Shemesh Yariah Hamad. Ela Moshe Minala, which means that the Shemesh stopped, and the Yariah Hamad means it stopped in its place. But how do you know Moshe Rabbeinu? Amar Rabbi Elazar says Rabbi Elazar, Atya Achel Achel. It's a Gzera Shava Achel Achel. Ketiva Achel, it's written by the Milchama of Moshe, Achel Tet Pachtecha Viratechal Pnei Amin, that he's going to give the Pachad, right, on the nations, right? And it says over here, Uchtiv Hatam, and it says over there, Achel Gadlecha. What does it mean, Achel Gadlecha? It's a Gzera Shava that we learn that just like Chelek of the Avtachav to Yoshua, was that that stopped the sun for him? So too by Moshe Rabbeinu was the exact same thing. Okay, so therefore it's a gzera shava from Moshe to Yoshua. Okay, Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachman Yamada he says no. Atia there's another gzera shava. Atia tet tet tiva chad written by Moshe Rabbeinu achel tet pachtecha and it's written by Yoshua biyom tet Hashem etayemuli. So it's not from the word achel achel, but rather it's from the word tet tet. Again, it's the same thing, right? Or tet al tet, right? But it's basically it's the same thing, just learning it from different words. Okay, Rabbi Yochanan Amar Rabbi Yochanan says. Atya mi gufe de kra. Yeah, what does that mean? It comes from the Pasuk itself. Because it says in the same Pasuk, they were afraid of you. When are they afraid of you? When they saw that the sun stopped from Moshe Rabbeinu, that's when they were afraid. That means they were afraid because it didn't make sense. It's not like, how long can it still be day? So that's when they were afraid of Moshe Rabbeinu. So you don't need Exera Shava, it's from the same Pasuk. No, 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 from there, there itself. And that's what it says, from then itself. Okay? That's the Yeah? The same halacha would apply to a city, right? That it does not rain in that part of the city. Amar of Yudam Rav says of Yehuda in the name of Rav, Ushtehen li klala. The kavanat of the pasuk is, is that both of them is for a curse, right? When you have a city that the rain did not come down, right? So then it's not going to grow at all the grain, right? Or that it did come down, but it comes down in such a strong thing that it's going to ruin the grain. Both of them are klala. Whether it doesn't rain or it rains too hard, right? The, both of them is going to be a klala. Hayita Yerushalayim lenida benehem. Yerushalayim was like a nida for them. This is a pasuk in Echa. Aleph Yud Zayin. Amar Rav, Yehuda Amar Rav. Says of Yehuda Amar Rav, Libracha. This was actually like a bracha. Kenida. It was like, that means, even though we think that it's something negative, right? Well, it was like, and Yerushalayim was them for a nida. That's something negative. No, 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 no. It was positive. Why was it positive? Just like the nida yesh la heter. A nida is only a nida for now. But she becomes purified to her husband. So to Yerushalayim, yesh la takana. The end, even though now it's going to fall, but it will have, it will be built again. We'll have it again. Haita Kalmana, also, he was like a widow. Amar of Yehuda, also Libracha. Because you would have thought being a widow is something negative. No, it's also a Bracha. What's a Bracha? Kalmana, but not a Namash. Saika Namana, but not a Namana Mamash. So what does that mean? He says, It's like a woman that her husband went to Midinat Yam. But she, he's going to come back to her. Meaning, it's not like a Mamash and Almana that the husband died and that's it. No. Like an amana. I mean, right now she's an amana because he's not here. But technically speaking, he's coming back. And he's going to come back for her. Okay? Next. Which means I'm going to place the Israel like a disgrace amongst all the nations. also They're not going to place, right? Which are people that are tax collectors. Usually they're on the bridges. 
right? From always, they always use bridges. It's not something new that bridges, they, they, you have to pay tolls on bridges, right? It was always like that. The Shenahare, right? Or Shotrim Yisrael, or Shotrim Yisrael, because since Yisrael or Bezuyim Shfalim Benehem, they say that, that we're not the Ruim. So therefore, we're not going to be able to become tax collectors or things like that. So why? Because they think that we're so low, so they're not going to place us there. But then in itself is a bracha that we're not that. Okay, why? Because usually, right, the, you know, the, the, those people are hated, right? Who likes a tax collector? Who likes the IRS, mm-hmm. right? So therefore, because of that, it was actually a bracha that we have, okay? Yisrael, yanuda kanem is going to smite, right? Just like a, the yanuda kanem b'mayim. Amar of Yudah Marav says of Yudah the name of Rav, Libracha, this is also a blessing. Tamar of Shmuel and Achmanim Rav Yonatan says, Shmuel and Achmanim Rav Yonatan, my dictiv, what does it mean in the Pasuk? Nehmanim Pitseo Hev and Taron Shikot Sone, right? Which means that the Pitseo Hev, right, are going to be Nehmanim. They're going to be truthful. These Pitse Petsa, it's like a bruise, the bruise of a beloved one, or the Fuchot and Shikot Sone. The, the kiss of a, of a hater, right, is also going to be the opposite. The klala, parachia shiloni, curse Israel, is better than the beracha that bilam arasha bless Israel. And that's the pasuk. It's better the makah of somebody that loves you than the kiss of somebody that hates you. More some of that. Well, that, that's what we're saying. Yeah. yeah. Like by Achia Shiloni that he came and he gave us a curse. That curse is even better than the blessing that Bilam Arashah gave us. Achia Shiloni kilam bekane. He cursed us with the kane. What does mean? Malam Yisrael. He kashem tisel kashunu kane. Hagos Baruch is going to smite Yisrael just like the, he smites the reeds in the water. Makan as they omen in komayim, but the kane still stays in water. The gizom achlif and it revives itself. The Shalasham Rubim has got a lot of roots. Even if you're going to come and they're going to blow all the winds in the world, it doesn't move it. It goes with the wind. It will go. Don't worry about it. It goes with the wind. So he says over here, it stops the ruchot. So now the kaneh comes back to its place. He blessed them with an eres, with a cedar tree. It is, the cedar tree does not go in water. It doesn't renew its, rejuvenate its uh, roots. It doesn't have a lot of roots. Even if you're going to have, right, all the winds, they're not going to move it. But if it comes a southern wind, it's going to have completely uprooted and thrown on the floor. Right? And all that, the kane, the reed is much better because you have, where, what comes from the reed? The kulmus, the kulmus is what you write. Sifret Torah, Nevi'im Uktuvim. Kulmus is, the, you know, the, the in order to write, yeah. right? The, 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 the pen, the kulmus. So he comes out, right? It's, 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 so look at this, it's incredible. So says the Gemara, Tanu Rabbanan, the rabbis taught us, Lo'lam yadam rach kekane. A person should always be soft like a reed. Alika sheket is never be strong like a cedar tree, right? Yeah. Ma'aseh shebea rabbi lezar, rabbi shimon minigdal gador, mi bet rabo. There was a story with Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shimon that came from Migdal Gedor, that he came from the house of his rabbi. He was riding on the donkey and he was by the edge of the river. And he was all, you know, why? He learned a lot of Torah. So he was all happy. He was all jolly. Kafa Mubet, 20B. He found someone that was so ugly. Yeah, that happens. I have it all the time. Yeah, so what happens? So he says, Amalo. So he comes and he says, Ya yeah, Shalom Alecha Rabbi. The Shalom Alecha, my rabbi. He didn't answer. Amalo, he comes and he tells him, right? Reka, empty. You're an empty person. Why is he so ugly? Right? So basically, the, the rabbi, he comes and he says, Why is this guy so ugly? Maybe everyone in your city is as ugly as you are. So Amalo, he comes and he says, Any yodea. Right? I don't know. So you know what? I don't know. But if you want, go to the craftsman that made me and tell him how ugly I am. He realized that he sinned. Immediately once he realized that he sinned, he came off the donkey and he bowed in front of him. And he says, 
נעניתי לך, right? I, 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 it's, it's true, I, I spoke against you. מחולי, please forgive me. אמר לו, he says, אין אם אוכל לך, I'm not going to forgive you, עד שתלך לאומן שסני ואומר לו, כמה מאוחר, I'm not going to forgive you, until you go to the craftsman of me, and tell him that. Yeah, tell him that. Go to the craftsman of me, yeah, tell him that. Right? היה מטייל אחריו עד שהגיע לעירו, he went after him, until he got to the city. יצאו בני עירו לקראתו, so all the people came out of the city, came out to Rabbi Lazar, to see him. והיו אמרו לי, they told him, שלום עליך רבי רבי, מורי מורי, they started telling him, big rabbi, you know, אמר להם, למי אתם קוראים רבי רבי? So the, the אדם מכוער, the guy that was, you know, embarrassed, that he was the ugly guy, he comes and he tells all these people, who are you guys calling רבי רבי? אמרו לו, he says, לזה שמטייל אחריך, the guy that's really riding behind you. אמר להם, he says, אם זה רבי, if this is רבי, אל ירבו כמותו בישראל, there shouldn't be people like that in Israel. If that's your rabbi, there shouldn't be people like that in Israel. Amru, they told him, Mitnema, why? Amar lehem kach lekach asali, this is what they, he did to me. Amru, they told him, af al pichem mechol lo, shadam gadol baturah. He says, you know what, even though he did that, forgive him. He's an adam gadol baturah. Amar lehem, he told them, bishulchem areni mochel lo. For you guys, I'm going to forgive him. Uvidvad shulay gudusov, but he can't do that. Miyan nikhnas Rabbi Elazar b'shimom v'darash. Therefore, Rabbi Elazar b'shimom went and he said, Leolam ya adam rach kekane. A person should be very soft, like a reed, but not very hard, like a cedar tree. The, the, the guy, the mechoar guy, was hard like a cedar tree. He didn't want to accept nothing. Right? And therefore, What? Fine, but even with that, a person should not be strong like a cedar tree. You should only be, right? It should be soft like a kane. And that's why the kane was actually going to be zoche. Papa Mubet, two dots. V'chen ir sh'yesh ba devil on a pellet. A city that has a pestilence or a mapolet. Remember, mapolet is basically that things just continue falling. Tara Rabbanah, we learned in a bright time. Mapolet, Shamru, what are we talking about mapolet? We're talking about beriot velo reuot. So obviously we're talking about, right, beriot, right, velo reuot. Beriot means, right, very good. So we just said that when, when we're talking about mapolet, which means the buildings fall down, we're talking about there were a building that was very strong and it fell. We're not talking about a building that already showed corrosion, right, or other things many years back, and then all of a sudden it just falls. That's not called a mapolet. Okay? Right, so now we understand, you know, everything that's going on, right? So it says, It has to be something that's not fitting to fall. Meaning if you have a, a, a tower, right, that just drops. So if it was that it's supposed to drop because there's just so much, you know, corrosion and, and, and the structural damages and, and you've already seen it for years, so that, obviously that's what's going to happen. You understand? So no, here we're talking about a, a mapolet is, is that the, the place is strong, the place, every, and all of a sudden, boom, everything just falls. Something. Yeah. So now it says, hey, mean who briot. what does it mean, briot? and what does it mean, shenru yotlipol? What does it mean that it's bad and that it is Rawi Lipo? So says Gimena, it's the same thing. If you're going to tell me now that it's strong, so then it's not fitting to, to fall. If you're going to tell me that it's weak, that means it is willing, willing to fall. It's, it's like it's supposed to fall. So says Gimena, It fell because of its um, gova, which means that basically that it, the, the was too high. So therefore, even if it wasn't soft, it was just too high for the height, meaning the height it was a problem. You know, said so they always have to make sure that whenever they're doing things which are very tall, you need a very, very strong base. Sometimes you could have something that the walls are strong, strong, and anything, but it's just too high. So naturally, just by the science or whatever, you know, the, by the engineering, it's just going to fall, right? Inami or the kaiman aguda de nahara. If it's going to be by svatanar, why? Because the teva of the water is it makes it soft the ground. And therefore, it destroys the foundations of the walls. And therefore, even if it's going to be that it was a strong wall, if it's by the river and the river is going to make it soft, it's going to destroy it. Okay? Just like there was this kotel, right, that was destroyed in the, in the, in Narda. The Raman Shmuel never went in the, underneath this wall. Why? Even though it was 13 years there. Why? Because they went and they said, listen, this, <laughs> at any time, this thing could just collapse. So, once the Ravad Barav went there, what do we go around it? 
Amale lo tzicha inna. But we don't need the Karavada Baba. We don't have to go around. You know, it was, we have Ravada Baraba with us. The naf, the naf is the chute. He's got a lot of the chuyot. Velom is tafina, and I'm not afraid. You understand what that means? Velom is tafina means that I'm not afraid. Why? Because basically what's happening is, he's got a lot of the chuyot. So oh, we got this big rabbi. Don't worry about it. We go straight to straight under. There's no problem. Ravuna, havelehu chamra ba'u betariya. Ravuna once had wine in a house, which was a house that could break. So you want to take it out. He put Ravada Barata there, right? So he went and he started giving over the Torah until he was able to, to take everything out. But once Ravada Barava left the house because now there was nothing else in the house, the house fell. So Argish Ravada Barava, so Ravada Barava, he felt this, the Ikpad, and he was makfid. He's like, Iwa, what's going on over here? So he felt that which Rabbi Yana, he said, He said, one second, a person should never put himself in a place of Sakana and then say that maybe they're not going to do it for him. They're not going to be doing it for him. They're going to take away his So therefore, they're not going to do this. So I'm Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman, sorry, Rav Nachman says, Micah, what's a pasuk? Tichtiv, as it says in a pasuk, Katonti mikola chasadim mikola emet asher asita tavdecha. So this is the pasuk mefurash in the Torah, which is teaching us, that even though uh, uh, Yaakov Avinu had a haftacha, had a security from Akrosh Baruch Hu, that I'm going to watch over you and nothing bad will happen to you, he said, Katoni kol chazim, chazim. My hava, right? So why? Because he said that maybe Bemet is going to take away the zechuyot, and now I have a problem. So, so my hava is, uvda, what? I'm nest for someone. It could be that they're taking away his miracles. So my hava uvda, the Ravada Barava. What's the uvda? What's the case of Ravada Barava? Just like it was stated, Shaluta Nidav le Ravada Barava, the students asked Ravada Barava, So they asked Ravada Barava, why do you have such a long life? Amal Lahem, he told them, you want to know why? I was never angry inside my house. Huh? Like some people, they come and on the outside, you look at them and they look like the nicest guys in the world. In their houses, Hashem Ishmo. Yeah? What does that mean? Ooh, it's a big problem. Yeah, I never went and I stepped in front of somebody that was greater than me. Right? It says over here that you're not supposed to go in front of somebody that's greater than you. I never thought of the Torah in places which were dirty. I never went for a mode without Torah and without Tfilin. I never slept in the Bet Midrash. Not Shinat Keva or I meaning not Mamash, like a real sleeper, no? And I never was happy at my friend's downfall. And I never called them by his nickname. Some people, they have nicknames. I never called them by the nickname. And some people say, which is a kinoy of gnai, which is basically, you know, like something of a negative. Okay? Oh. Amale Rav Lezer, this name, I'm sure, is familiar to a lot of you people already in Daf Yomi. Rav Lezer, Papa. So says Rava to Rav Rambar Papa, Tell us a few things, good things that Ravuna used to do. So Amale, he says, When he was very small, I don't remember. But when he was older, I do remember. Every single Yom Meunan, right, they used to carry him in a pirion of Zahav. So every single cloudy day, they used to carry him, right, in a small, like, chariot, okay, of gold. And he used to go around the entire city. In any wall which looked weak, he would destroy it. Right? If they would pay for it, he would buy it. He would, pay, he would build a new one. If they couldn't pay for it, he would pay for it for himself. Meaning, he would see a wall. It's a little bit weak. Boom, destroy it. If they had the money to build it, he would take the money and build it. If they didn't have the money to build it, he would build it on his own expense. Of course. Yeah. And every single head of Shabbat, right? And any yerek which was left over, right? He used to buy it and throw it in the river. Why? Right? Why? Because that way, right? He would stop them from losing money in order that every single head of Shabbat they would always bring merchandise. Imagine right now, right? And this is, by the way, a very, very, it's very true. Point. So that they bring for Shabbat, for Shabbat to live. Exactly. He wanted to make sure that they want always were going to bring for Shabbat. So now, if they're going to bring for Shabbat and now there's leftovers, next week they're going to be, bring less. 
let the, and and then people are just saying, you know, it's not worth for coming. Exactly. So what happens? So he went and he wanted to make sure that they always come. How do we make sure they always come? Whatever's left over, I buy. Who is that? The Ravuna. Like Ravuna. Like this, uh, guy, uh, yeah, but he was a big uh, rabbi. Ravuna. 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 Yeah. China. Velet So says the Gemara. One second. Why doesn't he buy it and he gives it at least to the Aniim? Why does he have to buy all this merchandise and throw it in the river? So Zimnin the Samcha that Tayu below at Tulamizman, he says, no, you know why? Because then the Aniim are going to rely on him and they're not going to buy anything with Shabbat Kodesh. So he purposely wanted that they themselves should buy something for Shabbat Kodesh before he used to throw it in the river. So says Zimnin, I'll throw it to the animals at least. Katsavar, he says, you don't give food for human beings to animals. That's what he held. So says the Gimena, yeah. So says the Gimena, the Loli Zimne Klan. So don't, don't buy them at all. So says the Gemara, you're going to cause them to, to suffer in the future. That what's going to happen? They're going to be a stumbling block because now in the future they're not going to come back. When there was something that he needed a trufa that wasn't found, he used to fill a cut of it. They tell him the debate and he used to hang it in his house. The Amar and he says, "Call the buy later levish call anybody that needs the vaccine, come and take it." He kadam and some people say milta the shifta gami. He knew. The shed of Shipta, which you the shed of Shipta was a mazik, right? It was a mazik. What do you mean mazik? It was a certain type of a demon that he used to damage people that would eat without netilat yadayim of shachrit. So he used to have this cut of water, and he used to say, anybody that needs water for netilat yadayim of suda, let you load the can come and, and use it so that way they don't get into a sakana. Right? Okay. When he used to eat a seuda, he used to open up the entrance of his house. The Amar and he says, Just like we say on Pesach. Anybody that wants to eat, come and eat. Amar says, There's a big tzaddik. Amar Rava, Rava says, All these things that did Ravuna, we could have done it as well. Except for this. What is the last one? Opening up and everybody, why? That we can't do such a thing. Why? He says, Mishum the naf the nafisha bin echela de mechuza. Because there's so many people, the anim of mechuza, it's impossible. If they would open up their doors and have all the poor people come in, mechuza is a city. It was it, it was impossible. So because of that, he says that we can't do in ourselves.